Welcome back to Still a Part of Us. We are privileged to talk to Jinu and Jibin, who are the parents of Jaden. Uh, we just had a wonderful conversation, and uh, I'm going to be honest, it was it was hard to to hear his story and just how much love they have for him. And it's, it's wonderful to hear that kind of love, like I said, for for a son. But welcome back again. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for your time today. As a point of reference, can you tell us a little bit about Jaden and what happened to him and when he was born? So Jaden um, was our third pregnancy after two girls, five and seven years old. He was born on the 17th of November, 2022, and he was born via emergency C-section. He lived with us for 15 weeks and he passed away on the 2nd of March, 2023, which is now almost seven months mm -hmm. since. And um, the current diagnosis, we are still awaiting for the final report, mm -hmm. but provisionally, they're thinking it sits. Thank you for that. And I would, if you have not listened to their story, I and Jaden's story, I would highly recommend that. That was a, we don't have often stories of SIDS or, or infant deaths. And so this is, I think these are important to discuss because you guys are, you're dealing with a totally different grief, a totally something that's very foreign to me. And I, I hope to never have to, to experience, but, um, I wanted to start out first discussing what has the grief look like for you in that first little bit, maybe the first month or two, because he passed away on the 2nd of March. He was buried at the end of March. I think the 28th, I think is what um, you had mentioned. So how did that first month look like as you guys were mourning and preparing for his, his funeral? So initially, my body was in shock. Yeah. I couldn't fully understand what was going on. I knew that he was no more. But my brain took some time to accept that he's no more. I was completely out of myself. Initially, I should say that we were pretty much busy because a lot of people came to our house trying to pray for us, comforting, you know. Um, we had a lot of visitors. Yeah. And so we were kind of distracted. But after his funeral, there was fewer number of visitors few families that stayed around and it got to a point that we it was just the four of us back again and that was hard I would say that grief for me at the time really hit in after his funeral mm -hmm. for my children it was a period that they lost their own brother the little brother and also a day that they lost their mother too I was struggling to look after the girls. I'm lucky I had my husband who took care of all of us. Yeah. But from a mother's point of view, for that moment of time, I was just Jaden's mommy. I wasn't a wife. I wasn't a mother to my other children. I was just Jaden's mommy. And I lost my child. And that's all that mattered to me at the time. I couldn't even have a conversation with my children. I couldn't dress them up to school. I couldn't feed them. I couldn't be a mother at the time. For anybody that might think, wow, how could she ignore her other children? I'm going to just say the singularity of your brain to focus on that grief and, the, and grief does funny things to you where you really just cannot function. I, I couldn't function. So I totally understand where you're coming from. Just like, this is the, all that's important right now. But the girls was, they were really brave. They were trying to console me. Yeah. The mother, yeah. Um, which is usually in any other situation, it's the other way around. Yeah. But in this case, they were consoling me. Mommy, it's okay. You can cry. Um, my youngest told me once, Mommy, don't worry. You're, you're a special mommy. That's why you had a baby like Jaden. Oh, he's a special baby. That's why he's with Jesus. Oh, from a five-year-old. So yeah. 
And sometimes you think, oh, where well, she's talking. Yeah. <laughs> she's only five. And yeah. Wow. So was, hearing things like that make me happy, but only for a moment of time. Yeah. And I'm gone back to zero again. And also, uh, I think uh, the 2nd of March, um, like due to everything, they were quiet, they were understandable. And then after two weeks, they just, when we were together, they just come and asked me, like, can you explain me what happened on that day? Oh, it took them two weeks to ask. Yeah. Like I said in the previous yeah. conversation, but, you know, both of them they didn't, didn't ask me or him what's happened to the baby. Yeah. And after two weeks, they were like, you know, can you explain to me what's happened? And we kind of told them what happened to him, what we think happened to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We highlighted the fact that we don't know exactly because nobody's seen what's happened to mm -hmm. him. He was on his own. And then questions started coming. So what's going to happen to his body? Why is he cold? Yeah. Uh, who's going to feed him? Who's going to change oh. his diaper? Um, so, you know, how far is it to heaven? You know, and things like that. It was, I couldn't answer all of that. Yeah. It was disturbing me. I don't know what to, and I've never come across that situation before. I don't know how to speak about death to children. Yeah. Another question I remember, uh, well, she asked me, you both are nurses. Why don't you serve your child? Why, why didn't you? You're nurses. You're supposed to save lives. Why didn't you save Jaden? And that really touched us. And me as a grieving mother, that's enough for me to cry for the next two days. Yeah, I would be in a wreck. I'd be a wreck. Because initial stages, I'm, I'm, I'm blaming myself. I'm blaming myself that I, I didn't stay with him whilst, whilst he was sleeping. I did it. I, I, I'm just feeling guilty for that. I didn't, I didn't stay with him. Yeah. Why didn't I just raise the concerns again more that something could have been done with regards to his, his disturbed breathing? Why didn't I just, you know, make a firm decision that this needs to be done? I'm, you know, why didn't I just shout at them? And yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, there's always this, I should have done this, I should have done this, I should have, there's, you can, it's so easy to get into that spiral of thought of blaming and uh, you should have, could have, would have done all of these things um, in hindsight, like you said. Many times you're like, yeah, when we look back, I, I can see maybe that we, something was different. I should have done something and I, yeah, that's, that's a tricky a tricky spot to be in as a as a grieving parent. Um, Jibin, do you can you tell me about that first little while? I know we talked briefly that um, my husband, who I love very much, is was my rock during that those first few months where I was, like I said, not in my right mind. I and it sounds like you you did plenty of taking care of Jinu and your kids. Uh, can you tell us how that was for that first month or two and how, how you navigated that? The first, like when he passed away, I was more focused on Jinu. So I was thinking like she's going to do something stupid thing. So I was behind her. Every time when she go upstairs, I follow her. And even when she go to the toilet, I follow her because I was 24-7 watching her. And I had a feeling like she's going to do something stupid thing. Anyway. So that was that was that was what I was I was doing, and then I realized the girls they need to look after as well. So uh, you know, uh, by the time uh, before the funeral, my mom came from India. Okay. So, yeah. So my mom was here. So then I had a bit of you know um, support. Support. Yeah. And I was more concentrating on girls. I know Jinu is not focusing on girls. So because I've got my girls, so I need to focus. I think the girls give me strength and that's it. So I was looking after them, feeding them. Otherwise, nobody else look after them. Yeah. Um, every day we go to church and then straight after the church, we go to the cemetery. 
This is like a routine stuff for like four or five months mm -hmm. every day. So because we're waking up in the morning to send the kids to the school and the church. Yeah. So we got a plan. So we need to see, you know, we need to be there like in the cemetery. So we need, to, we need to be to the church. So that's the first thing, morning section is that. Yeah. After doing that, we were thinking, uh, yeah, we need to focus. You know, at least when we go to church, we get some peace. And then we try to meet another uh, different priest. Okay. And, uh, and then also we asked help for, there's some a couple of nuns in our church. Mm -hmm. So we asked, asked help uh, to talk to their kids. So like oh. they got so many Christians. So we can't, uh, even though we answered them, they back to zero. They asked me the same question again next day. Yeah. We we know that you know religious something completely different that we used you know we we never used to be religious before we mm -hmm. were just Sunday Christians I should yeah. say um, or you know Christmas Christians that's yes all. yeah mm -hmm. uh, but uh, since Jaden's incident we have completely gone into the religious path we it kind of gives us hope it kind of gives us the strength to stand up. So since then, you know, the, the major changes are that we, we, we started going to church more every day. Um, we, we've, our main priority focus changed from um, our, you know, fun life into a more religious life. Um, because, you know, if you believe the scientific facts, life just ended there. Yeah. And to me, that doesn't make sense. I don't want to believe in that. I want to meet my baby and religion tells me that there is an afterlife. We're all going to go there. We, we're going to meet him. Yeah. And that's my, uh, we are firm believers of that now. So, yes. Yes. I, I, I would agree with you on that is that faith, well, our faith changed also after we lost our son because there is some, there's hope in that. And I have faith in that as well. And I, think it's I think it's kind of a lovely routine that you have of <laughs> getting the girls ready and then going to the church I, I just think that that visiting Jaden I think that's a like that's a important thing to have that as part of your family rhythm routine. it sounds like yeah rhythm and routine so obviously those first few months are I I think they're so hard and a blur I'm it's I think it's such a blur where you just don't know what's happening from one day to the next. And, and that's, that's hard, especially um, for, for each of you. I know that um, Jim and you supported Junu a lot um, in those first, you know, first few months. What do you guys, what are some things that you have done as a couple to try and help you support, uh, support each other in your grief? So we, we started traveling mm. within the, first second month since he was gone we just started traveling because it came to a point that we just realized as a family that the moment we enter this house it's it's not looking good and when we're out and about we're fine we we, we can manage the day-to-day -day tasks yeah as soon as we enter it's we we see his swing there his push chair there his clothes his toys and it doesn't make sense that he's not here. Yeah. So, and I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't just stay in this house for long periods of time. So we started traveling. We, we been to um, Rome, Vatican. It, it, yeah, it's not like a um, holiday. It's just a like somewhere, a pilgrimage somewhere pilgrimage. nice, somewhere yeah. peaceful. We've never thought that we'll have a holiday or a vacation abroad and that's going to be a pilgrimage we never thought we would do that in our yeah. lifetime so but life brings us here god brought us here and yes so we've been to loads um you know so that was traveling has made us move on a little bit yeah. because otherwise we are just stuck on the 2nd of march yeah so, a chain uh, it's always interesting uh, having a change of scenery cuz i've talked to several people that after after they lost um, their child, then they ended up going on a, on a trip 
just yes. once again, that change of scenery. So you're correct. Like you are seeing all of this stuff there and you don't want to get rid of it, but you're also, it's a, it's a reminder all the time. It feels like of how he's not there. Yes. Another thing I would say on 30th April was Gina's birthday. So I know she's not, she's not going to celebrate that. But when we went to Italy, we were in um, a convent. We had an accommodation in convent. With mm-hmm. the nuns. With the oh. nuns. Mm-hmm. For the security purpose, we sent a photocopy of our passports details. So the the superior mo- uh, mother, mm-hmm. she just had a look at it and then she realized, oh, first of April is her birthday. 30th of April. Oh, sorry, yeah. 30th of April, yeah. Sorry, I'm very bad with the number. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so they give us a surprise uh, cake, and oh, yeah. yes. So I wasn't planning on celebrating at all. It was just not my birthday that day at all. Yeah, it didn't it didn't look like my birthday at all. But that evening, the the angels I should call them. Yeah, the angels, and um, yeah, they surprised me with the cake. Um, and they told us singing. You know, they told us Jaden. Send um send this. Just just imagine that Jaden sent this. That is so sweet. I that is really sweet. It's interesting you say that because there's like there's a very sometimes it feels like there's no reason to celebrate anymore. And um for them to do that, I think that's a, a nice way to just like have a little bit of joy in yeah. in your day, in your travel. That's pretty cool that you've been able to to have that change of scenery. So many gifts after that. Yes. <laughs> so we believe Jaden's giving us. Yeah, I think that's great. That's that's really cool that you're kind of feeling him close. I am wondering, um, with your girls, how do you guys? I know that they ask questions about kind of constantly of like what happened to him and why is where is he at and where is heaven and the, those types of types of things. What do you guys do as a family? to remember him or to talk about him? Do you try to talk about him on a, on a regular basis in your home? Yes. We, he's still part of us. We, I think more than us, the girls talk about him. Oh, really? And they, we've told them that um, Jaden's watching us, watching mm-hmm. you guys. He's protecting you. Mm-hmm. Um, so they kind of started, you know, praying and they, Instead of praying to Jesus, they're like, Jaden, can you ask Jesus to? So oh. it's more of a protector. Yeah. So we, we told the girls that, you know, do you know how you used to look after your little brother? Um, you don't need to look after him anymore, but he's going to look after you. Yeah. So that's kind of reassured them that he's still around and yeah. seeing things that they do. So, and it's kind of, I wanted it to be like that because... I wanted him to be part of us. Yes. Even if he's not here. Yeah. And I want the girls to remember him. I want us to be normal that way. I want us to get used to the fact that he's no more, but he's still with us, if that makes sense. Yes. Very much. Like, I feel like once you're that, like you said, that family of five, you're still a family of five. Yes. He might not be here physically, but he's still very much uh, a part of your family, your your family unit. And I think that is your identity, too. And so I I, I think it's great that you guys talk about him and his watching over the girls. I, I think that's so sweet. Yeah, he's, he's part of our daily activities. He We talk about him all the time. Just in random conversations, the girls bring up his topic and... Oh, if Jaden was here, do you think he would be this size? He would oh. be that size. Um, do you think he will fit in this clothes anymore? Do you oh. think he's grown out of it? So we're trying to, as a family, I think we're trying to imagine that he is almost seven, eight months old, yeah. or he's seven months old. You know, mm-hmm. we, we're going according to his age. Yeah. So in our day-to-day conversations, he is definitely part of it. Yeah. He, he's lived. He lived all his life with us. Yes. We were. We were expecting yeah. us to live all our life with our son or our children but it's turned out the other way he's lived all of his life with us yeah that is like a really kind of a it's it's sad to think about that but it's also very reassuring too to feel like yeah he he just knew 
how much a, a home of love and a home of family. I just, I think that is a beautiful thought too, even though it's just like, oh yeah, there's a twinge of like, he shouldn't have gone this early, but he's, but it's also very reassuring as well. I like to ask this question. This is my personal, I think it's kind of an interesting one because people are always asking, what can I do if they know um, somebody that is, is going to face something similar? I always like to ask, what was helpful? What has been helpful that people have done for you um, throughout this? And also, on the other hand, what has not been helpful or what are some things that are not as helpful to say to somebody that is grieving a child. And, and you, you have a very unique situation in the sense that you, you guys don't have answers. You, this was very, yeah, this was out of the blue. He was born generally, he was okay when he was born and generally he was okay. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah. Happy boy and everything. And so, um, what are some things, like I said, are, were helpful that people did and said, and things that maybe not so helpful or things that maybe consider waiting, saying these types of things or doing these types of things um, so that the parents can kind of catch up to their grief and handle it on a a little bit later in the, in the future. I um, personally think that people are, don't have the awareness of what goes through a grieving parent and it's not their fault. It's, yes, they've not experienced that grief before and so I wouldn't blame them Mm -hmm. but it is hard it is it is it is really hard to explain but I think if someone has gone through the child's death or they are a grieving parent I found those people very helpful in my situation Um, I feel like I can connect to them I -hmm. feel like you're in the same page you understand me? That's really great. Yeah. I found that, you know, some of the friends, families, I I feel like they don't really understand what you're going through. Maybe because of, obviously, they, they've not have, had that personal experience. Yeah, so I, I found um, many situations, I found that, you know, it's, it's, it's actually distressed me more than a support. They, I mean, they, they try and do all they can to support us. Mm-hmm in all good intentions, you yes. know, whatever they say, whatever they do, I understand that. But according to like situation, like I'm what we're going through, um, it wasn't the best. Yeah. I found that talking to other moms who's lost a child was really helpful. Um, because it, to me initially, I didn't know what I would be like. Um, I didn't know what this grief is going to be like. Um, so I asked, um, you know, a couple of my friends, they had no idea. And one of, well, she was a stranger to me, but she, uh, we met through a mutual friend mm-hmm. and she lives in um, Canada. So she's reached out to me since yeah. hearing the story. Yeah. She got connected to me and that was really nice. And she's obviously had this experience um, five years ago. So she's kind of moved on since she had other children yeah I found that asking her like what how did you do, manage this how did you it kind, it's kind of reassuring me that I'm not wrong here yeah I'm, I'm doing the right thing for myself and this is what any other grieving parent would do so it's kind of reassured me that I'm normal because you I it got to a point you you know I kind of thought am I supposed to be this sad? Am I supposed to be moody all the time? Because the the society, the the community makes you feel like, right, it's been two months. You need to, you need to just get over it. You need to just move on. Yeah. And, you know, at the time I didn't have the courage to kind of say, you don't know what you're going through. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't understand. I just, I just stayed quiet. But now I have the courage to kind of say that this is me. Yes. And this is my grief. You have no idea what's going on in my mind, mm-hmm. what's going on in my heart. So, yeah, it's, it's for, you know, grieving parents, it's expectant that you will come across some kind of situation that really hurts you. People, you feel like people don't understand you mm-hmm. or people just take it like, I don't know, like a simple thing. Yes. But whereas you, what you're asking me to get over with is my child yes 
my living child, yes. you know. Mm-hmm. Compassion was the biggest factor, I think, that was lacking in our mm-hmm. case. And I'm not blaming them. I just, I'm just telling my feelings of, yeah. how I, of how I think, you know, what I've experienced. How, when you mentioned this person that you got in contact with in, from Canada, and she was a little farther out, you know, it's it's so funny because I thought about that as well. It's like, yeah, it's nice to have somebody else to say what you're going through is completely normal. <laughs> like your uh, h- how much you're crying and how much you are, what that grief looks like. And it's nice to have somebody that has, in a sense, paved the way ahead of you so that you feel like you can stand up in your own right. Like you said, you could stand up for how you are feeling, how your grief is manifesting itself. I will second that of just like having somebody that has gone before and and saying, it's okay, this is, this is completely normal and you do you kind of a thing. So um, she's kind of made me realize that the grief will still be there mm -hmm. in the same size and form, but your world will just kind of get bigger in in due course yeah so that was um helpful to hope that there will be a light at the end of the tunnel yeah initially there was just darkness that's beautiful I really like that how about you Jivin anything that you found to be very helpful or not so helpful in this seven months I know seven months is nothing compared to this is so still very new and very raw and hard I I suspect for everyone the first one or two months Mm -hmm. I was thinking like looking for some something there is something like oh Jaden is safe or I need something some vision or something you know I need um I can just connect you know things yes but I've seen a lot of people have people come to our house and you know so many things, uh, so many people, you know, talked differently. But just, just to be, uh, just one or two, um, I still remember the words. This is told like, uh, like a small story. They said, uh, Jaden has come from heaven. Okay. Jaden has come from God. From God. So he saw all the angels in there. So when you were aware, you know, when he was sleeping, the angels come to him and they were laughing and you know they just um playing with, playing him. with him so when they call him and he go with them so you will live with them like three months so he just gone with them that's normal she i think that lady has tried to say oh. something around like you know he's just known you guys for three months but he's come from god and he knows that he's familiar to those people more than you so he's called he's been called and he's gone he's it's familiar mm-hmm. they are familiar to him more than us so he's gone and just imagine that he's happy and he's playing around with his friends and and i said to her you know you just told me the story like you're telling a nursery child a little story and it's mm-hmm. it's touching it is touching it's, yeah it is touching it's i never touching. thought of that you know mm-hmm. i've always you know imagined that He's had a painful death. He's he's probably yeah. had, you know, he's he's upset now. He's he's struggled. That's that's as a mother that yeah that really hurts me that he it's, he's struggled. Yeah. And the other way around, thinking thinking the other way around was challenging. I said, how how is that possible? So he can be happy as well. I I can't just imagine that he's he's sad. He's yeah. struggling. Yeah. What if he's happy, you know, he's not struggling anymore. Yeah. So that actually, it touched us, even though it's it's a little story that, but yeah, it, it meant a lot to us at that time. Yeah. We still remember people like that. Yeah. That give you just a little bit of uh, comfort yeah. of him. Yeah. Like you said, not struggling, but being something almost opposite of just, it's not sadness. It's a, there's a little bit of happiness there. Yes. Some people are really helpful, but some of them, I don't know what to tell. <laughs> Make you <laughs> make you worried and mm-hmm. yes. I personally think if you don't know what to say, just keep quiet. You know. Yeah, I really appreciate yeah. people come and visit and just you know 
don't say anything that's fine yeah rather than say something and it hurts us it's you know some people came to our house to visit us and they're just like it's okay don't worry you'll just have other children and I'm just like I don't know what to say to these people yes. and or you know mothers who are going through the same please expect that you will hear lots of mm-hmm. comments I think that's just how the world is yeah they're so quick to kind of find a solution right like it's a it would be a, a band-aid pregnancy or you know a replacement child you're like no no it's not it's identity yes I appreciate that you guys are religious and and have a kind of a longer view of of eternity I guess of um what will happen after this life um I am wondering do you guys feel do you feel him nearby do you feel like he's part of your family do you feel his presence with you That's a good question um for the first 2 or 3 months we never felt his presence I've heard other mothers say um you know I could feel him at the funeral I could feel his presence um or you know they could they know that their child is around mm-hmm. but I was like I can't feel anything it's just empty my house is empty and my my heart is just empty so after the first 3 months we've obviously been to the vatican we i we prayed we prayed and we prayed at the st peter's basilica and mm-hmm. i said you need to give me a baby i said it to jesus you need to give me a baby and it has to be before his first anniversary that's that's my intention and i prayed and i i prayed i um we 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 started trying for a baby straight away within mm-hmm. the first month we've had you know a couple of negative tests and a lot of you know we consulted doctors um the bereavement team they were they were just telling me that you know your your body is in shock um you might not conceive within the yeah. first year at all you yeah. know most most grieving parents they conceive after the first year mm-hmm. or you know second year or they might struggle with fertility issues due to yes. stress mm-hmm. you know we were given all this information but we prayed that was our only hope and the fourth month um in fact yeah end of the fourth month we got a positive pregnancy test oh. yes we we are pregnant i feel like god is gracious he is really doing lots of miracles in our lives. Yeah. The first the very first two or three months we were running after the cause of his death, cause of Jaden's death. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we couldn't find any answers, we were struggling. But indeed, um you know, we were given answers in other ways by other people, by other situations. And the most miraculous part of this this whole story is that the due date the estimated due date falls on the 2nd of march really? 2020 which is his first anniversary in heaven yeah. Yeah. exactly it, it it's not the 3rd of march it's not the 1st of march it had to be the 2nd of march wow. and people think you know this is not possible there's no chance you know it's it is possible in our case according to my uh, menstrual period date that i got 2nd of march we been to our first scan it is still the 2nd of march so there's no changes yeah it is reassuring us that what else can this be yeah what else can this be that yes we've lost a child we're getting another it's it's not a replacement baby but it's our baby and that's all that matters jaden is always going to be jaden there's nobody can replace him but yes uh, so that's how we felt his presence for the first time wow yeah and we firmly believe that it is a gift of jaden nobody else can do that yeah according to science i'm not even supposed to conceive within the first year this is a miracle a rainbow baby yeah yeah i think there is no we need to hold some somebody you know yeah so, I struggled. I'll be honest. I struggled when, when we had our son after our loss and how do I, how do I tell, t- 
tell my new little son, my little rainbow baby, about his older brother that he's never going to meet? I guess what are you going to tell this new baby that's going to be coming? I think the baby will gradually know by our conversations, by our day-to-day lives, he's still with us. And no matter if we have another child, it's going to be part of our life anyway. So I think baby will will get to know, will, will grow knowing Jaden. And I'm, I'm sure about that. I'm 100% sure about that. Me as a mother and Jibin as a father, we, we will, even if we don't directly tell the baby, the baby will know. We're sure of that. Thank you so much. This has been a, such a wonderful conversation. I am so sorry that you are in the throes of this. This is like so early still. Um, so I appreciate you being honest and frank with me about how it's been. Is there any last little bit of advice you would like to share with anybody or anything you wanted to say about Jaden too? I think the most important person that it needs to be shared with is our rainbow baby. We've got a little message for him. I, I am sure that once the baby is a bit older, Jaden will be known to the child. That's wonderful. Thank you so much again. You guys are wonderful and I appreciate your time so, so much. And thank you for sharing Jaden with us. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you for thank having you so us. Oh, thank yes. You. You're welcome. Thank you for your time. Dear Emmanuel, Hi, baby. It's me, your mom. Today, I want to tell you the story of how you came to be. It's a special story because you changed our lives forever. We've only known you for a little while, but it's been the best days of our lives. I hope you always know how much mom, dad, Angelina and Amaya loves you, wanted you and waited for you. You're our dream come true and the answer to so many prayers. Emmanuel, to start from the beginning, before you, there was another baby. His name is Jaden, and he's your older brother. He was our third pregnancy, and mum and dad were so happy when we found out about him as a sweet surprise in 2022. He was born on November the 17th, 2022, and lived with us for 15 wonderful weeks and he brought so much joy to so many people. He was special. He had the brightest smile in the world. He also had a heart-shaped left earlobe which I've never seen on anyone else before. He taught your sisters all the responsibilities of a big sister and also a bit of the motherhood which they automatically learned. We were so happy that our family was complete and we were even ready for vasectomy. We made so many appointments and for one reason or the other, all of them got cancelled without good reasons. We didn't know God's plan was something else. One cold afternoon, On the 2nd of March, 2023, we found out he passed away in his sleep. Emmanuel, it was the hardest thing we've ever gone through. It was the most scariest day in mommy and daddy's lives. As I held Jaden's tiny lifeless body in my arms, I wondered what I was going to do with my heart that was swelling with love for him. Where would it go? I had to wake up one day without a baby next to me. It was the day I lost my son and the day I lost myself. I felt so empty inside. I felt like I don't have the energy to face the world anymore. Seeing your sister's grief was even worse than my own. 
the days and nights were hard for a long time. Staying in the same town, in the same house, without my baby was the worst part out of all. Initial days, we were running after the reasons of his death. There was no answers. But God sustained us. We came closer to God. Eventually, we stopped running after the reasons behind his death. Instead, we were given answers to our questions by numerous events in our life over many months. But Emmanuel, through the grief, we still wanted to have another baby. We prayed at the Basilica of St. Peter's in Vatican for a baby. A baby to be in my arms before his first anniversary. The bereavement team, doctors and clinical staff informed me that my body is in shock and may not conceive in the first year at all. We prayed and waited. And within four months, God blessed us with a pregnancy. It was you. God gave me laughter one day. He was so gracious. The most miraculous part of the story is that the estimated due date falls on the 2nd of March 2024, which is the same day of Jaden's first anniversary in heaven. I feel like you are Jaden's gift sent from God. Emmanuel, you are a rainbow baby, just like a rainbow after a storm. You are our bright light after our time of darkness. And yet, despite being so happy, I was scared to do it all again. I was so scared of losing you. I am battling daily anxiety throughout this pregnancy. But I know that God is watching you. And you even have a personal angel brother who will look after you, protect you. I am living my days in the hope of meeting you, little man. Emmanuel, I wanted to be emotionally well for you, but it was hard for me to be happy as well as live my life as a grieving mother at the same time. I was struggling to move on and moreover scared of forgetting Jaden and his memories. I don't know what I would have done without your dad. He was so kind and patient. He supported me throughout the time. He took care of both of us. That made me realize that I am a mummy of four and I have all the energy to love all of my children. That was a moment that I stopped being upset about Jaden, stopped worrying about you and just started to love all four of you in the same way I would have done if Jaden was here too. And then, at some point, my anxiety turned into joy. Baby, you came into our lives so fast and I understand that God's plans are very clear here. I realized that if Jaden's incident didn't happen, we wouldn't have met you. I can't wait to hold you in my arms. Mummy, Daddy, your sisters... And your older brother loves you so much. Thank you for being mine. I love you. I love you. I love you so much.